Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gino's Grooming Channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how to handle pet grooming clippers. Uh, and by handle, I mean how to hold them and what direction to use them in. And if you need information about clippers, basic clippers, how they work, how clipper blades work, how attachment combs and guide combs work, take a look for those videos. We have a series of those on Gino's Grooming Channel. I'll also index them down uh, for you below in the description. So let's talk about how to hold a clipper. Uh, I see people hold these uh, a lot of different ways um, out there. And uh, I don't want to say that anyone is wrong. This is a no judgment channel, but there are things that we can do to make this a little better for our hand. So I'm going to show you a few ways that I hold a clipper. Hopefully you can try it out and see if that works better for you. So before we zoom in, let me just say, depending on your hand size, you're going to hold a clipper a little differently. Um, what you see a lot of people is they just wrap their hands around the clipper and they'll clip like this, right? Full around. Um, now, if you have a small hand, uh, that may be the only way that you can hold clippers or if you're using a really big clipper or maybe a clipper with a clipper vac. So there are different variables that will um, have you hold a clipper a little differently. But for our basic clipper work, let's zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. So this is a general size clipper, okay? And like I said, a lot of people just wrap it in their hands and hold it like this. Well, what I have learned to do, and I've seen people do, and I've learned, is to hold it like a pen. And I'm gonna show you a few angles about this, okay? So I've got two fingers protecting it. It's cradled between, okay, my fingers this way. I've got two fingers on this side that sometimes I'll crunch in, and then my thumb, okay? And I hold it like a pen or pencil. What this allows me to do, it gives me a lot more range of motion. I'm going to show you just holding it. So this way I'm employing not only my fingers, my wrist, right? My joints. I've got also my arm and my shoulder. Now I can employ all of these for a much more comfortable hold. Okay. And a lot better results. So when I'm talking about range of motion, I'm going to show you on uh, Rosie, our live poodle, um, to show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay. Guys, do not be afraid. This is not a black bear. Just a very long standard poodle, an old girl. Um, this is Rosie. You guys might have met her on our other videos. Um, and she's going to help demonstrate not only the range of motion that I was just discussing with that other way of holding a clipper, um, but she's also going to help us show direction. So when I'm talking about range of motion, and I'm going to show you the direction in which we're going to clipper, I'm going to show you a difference of the types of joints and what happens if you're just holding a clipper like this, which you'll see a lot of people hold, and then holding it like a pen or pencil. So let's do it the first way. Okay. And as I'm clipping, right, I'm going to be going under the body. Now, in order for me to get under the body with my clipper in this position, I have putting, I am putting strain on my shoulder. I'm putting strain on my elbow. I can feel this entire tendon really, really tight here. So in order for me to get in there, I might have to lean down. I might have to do all sorts of different things with my body. That's not necessary. If we change the position of our hand, okay, again, holding it like a pen. Okay. Now what this allows me to do is because now I've incorporated my fingers into that range of motion and also freed up my wrist, I'm able to clipper into places holding a clipper like this will actually go ahead and employ joints that I don't want to employ in a very bad way. So now I'm showing you how to hold a basic size clipper. This is our A5 clipper. Um, our detail clipper, like uh, the Bravura, um, same thing, like a pen. This one's a little smaller, but same thing, range of motion. You hold it like this. You're not going to get into those spots. Hold it like a pen, easy peasy, much more flexible. So now that we know how to hold our clipper, let's talk about direction. This is also something I see out there that people go in different directions. And in order to understand the direction, we first have to talk about lay of coat. So lay of coat is the direction in which the coat flows. Now, most breeds will have this. Funny enough, our model here, our poodle, has an open structure, right? Because poodles just kind of go poof. So they don't really have a lay of coat, but picture a lab, picture a golden retriever. That jacket, right, is laying in one direction. Uh, so that's what we have to understand when we're talking about clipping a coat. We have to know that we're going to be going with the lay of the coat in normal circumstances. Now, there are instances where you do go against the lay of the coat, um, and that is to get the coat to kind of lift up while you're going against the lay of the coat. 
That's normally for coats that shouldn't get clippered, um, especially if you think of, let's say, a Westie uh, where it should be getting hand stripped. Uh, and if you have questions on hand stripping, check out our channel on that. But you do see a lay of the coat. But if you go the opposite way, it's going to cut the coat shorter. Okay, just uh, be aware of that. Um, and it's basically going to be lifting that coat and going against the lay. So most of our haircuts that we do for any of our pet, we're going to be going with the lay and in a certain pattern. Now, let me also talk about patterns because in grooming, this is important, not only for our clipper work, also our brushing. We want to remember what we've done and where we are. Uh, so if we have the same pattern that we use time and time again, we're going to be a lot more thorough. So I'm going to show you the direction and the pattern that I use, and this is going with the lay of coat, knowing that some breeds, the lay changes, and also be aware of cowlicks and different changes in that lay of coat, also around the chest, be aware of that. But I'm going to show you my pattern of how I clip coats, okay, uh, so that you can understand the correct pattern that will pretty much follow most dogs with a lay of coat. So I'm going to equip uh, my clipper. I have a 30 uh, underneath with a 2. Normally, I will start a clipper, clippering right at the occiput, which is this bone at the top of the head. Poodles are a little different because we do a little scissoring, but mostly what we want to do is start kind of high um, by the neck, right? And continue down the back, okay? And then go down the body. And what I normally do is I do the rear legs. I'll do the front legs if they need clippering. Sometimes you scissor them. Do the chest, okay? And then we follow the same pattern on the other side. So following that direction, there are some places where we have to be really careful whether or not we're using a guard comb or we're going for a direct blade. So if we're doing a shave down, uh, let's say with a five or a seven, we have to be really careful around certain parts of the body in the direction that we're going to make sure that skin doesn't get caught into these teeth. So the places of caution that we really need to be careful about is first off the tuck up, right? There's a flap of skin here that's very loose. So when we're clipping over here, we want to make sure that we're going in this direction. Okay. Not in any way going up or down or this way. So always going against that flap to make sure it doesn't get caught in the teeth. The next place you have to look out for when you're clippering is right here. There's this tendon, really, really skinny little tendon that can get caught in the teeth of a guide comb. Um, and if you have a really small dog in an actual clipper blade. Um, so want you to be aware that this tendon here, we want to approach it from the side. You don't want to go this way and get it this way. Always approach this from the side. And the last place that is very, very delicate and has a floppy skin um, is the chest and neck area, especially as pets age. So I want you to be aware that when you're clipping, you're going to be pulling, especially if you have loose skin and clipping that way. You're going to be doing this anytime you have any loose skin. Sometimes you'll see loose skin in the belly. So make sure if you're working around loose skin, you're lifting the skin ahead of it, right above it, and then going ahead with your clip. Well, all right, guys, I hope this gives you a little insight into properly holding a clipper and also the direction that you should be using a clipper as well as holding the skin uh, on the pet as you're clippering to make sure that it doesn't get caught in the teeth of a clipper blade or a clipper guide comb. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Rosie, for helping us out. Guys, if you like this video, we appreciate you clicking that thumbs up. Subscribe for more like it. We appreciate your time. Thank you.